Unfortunately, over time, due to a variety of noxious stimuli, the cell can become increasingly less responsive to insulin. And so what was once a robust action in response to a polite knocking on the door of the cell becomes a diminished one, if not absent entirely. The consequences of this are myriad. A lot of the plagues of prosperity that I've alluded to, and Sam did too. But the most famous consequence would be that blood glucose levels start to steadily climb, eventually. Emphasis on eventually. It is going to be a delayed response. At the same time, what is actually a less delayed response, insulin levels are elevated as well. Next. And this is because if one polite molecule of insulin knocking on the door isn't sufficient to get the cell to do what insulin wants it to, well, then it will recruit an angry mob. And now there is a mob of insulin pounding on the door of the cell, all in an effort to try to restore whatever action it can, to whatever degree it can. Sometimes it can, as we go across the plagues of prosperity, sometimes it can't. You must appreciate that insulin resistance is a coin with two sides, like every coin. But the coin that I would be holding is a coin that I would say, this is insulin resistance. And they're part of it. One side of the coin is the whole phenomenon that I just got done talking to you about. That some of the body's cells aren't responding as well to insulin as, it, as they used to. But it's some cells aren't responding well. And this becomes a problem when we look at the whole body level. Because if we look across the whole body, insulin levels are elevated compared to where they were before. Indeed, there is no such thing as insulin resistance without hyperinsulinemia. It cannot happen. It doesn't matter what example an individual may be imagining, whether it's the pathological insulin resistance that I focus on as a scientist and that contributes to the plagues of prosperity, or whether it's the few instances, indeed only two, of physiological insulin resistance, when the body has become insulin resistant in an effort to promote dramatic growth. And just as an aside, that's the two Ps of physiological insulin resistance, pregnancy and puberty. Those are times of explosive growth and the insulin resistance and the hyperinsulinemia facilitates that explosive growth. <clears throat> and it's not harmful. It's necessary. All right, but in this same context, whereas some of the body's cells aren't responding to the insulin, and so the hyperinsulinemia isn't pathogenic or harmful, we have another bunch of cells that are as responsive to insulin as they ever were. Like the ovaries, for example. So, the, like, for example, the ovaries stay perfectly insulin sensitive. And so the hyperinsulinemia is telling the ovaries to do too much. Whereas her male counterpart, his blood vessels have become insulin resistant. And so the insulin isn't telling the blood vessels to do enough. The blood vessels need a lot more signal. 